Welcome back to the channel. If you are looking for a rare Navy Federal loan hacks on how to always get the loan amount you want, no matter your credit score, your credit score or job status, here are the steps that you need. Number one, I want you to apply what we call the 25% rule. This is very important. We have you have tried it over the last 30 years. It works. So basically, you want to seek a loan amount from Navy Fed that is maximum 25% of your income, boss. 25%. And I'm not even talking about 25% of your gross income. I'm speaking about 25% of your net income. If you do this, you will always win. Why? Let me explain to you why. See, the thing is that if you are looking for 25% of your income, what will happen here is that if we take, a, let's say, a generic budget, a regular budget, folks will spend like one third of their income on things like rent, groceries, and what have you. And what you want to do here is you have one third that's already gone for a for regular uh, purchases for in the house and you have another third that's going for credit cards and other loan repayments now you don't want to actually uh, go too much you want to you don't want to eat too much into your remaining disposable income so that's why we want you to limit your loan amount to 25 percent that gives you room to breathe in your budget okay you have monetary room and you have monetary bandwidth also to also get another loan and not increase crazily your DTI, okay, your debt to income ratio. And one thing I want to say here is that, I mean, the 25% rule works fine if you don't have other debts. In other words, you don't have a crazy amount of debts sitting out there. So the whole thing is you want to consider existing debt, your existing debt, even before sending the amount you want to borrow. So hack number one, you want to apply the 25% rule. What I'm trying to say here is, let's say you are making you are making $4,000 a month okay and after tax you are making three thousand dollars a month what i want what i'm trying to say here is that 25 percent of three thousand should be what it should be around uh, one quarter so we, you are looking at 750 so you want to multiply 750 by 12 that will that will tell you how much you can borrow from navy fed so basically 750 by 12 you are looking at what uh, seven thousand uh, seven thousand seven thousand five hundred probably around nine grand so nine grand that's the loan you want to apply for if you are making four thousand dollars a month okay money 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 boss money 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 how much do you want to borrow from navy fed talk to me about that and what is your uh, your current income your net income though don't don't give me the gross the gross is uh, inflated because you got to take taxes because I, i'm interested in your take-home pay and take that amount and apply the 25% rule to that amount. So they'll tell you how much you can borrow from Navy Fed and not really worry about approval. They will approve you if you if you stay if you are conservative in terms of in terms of the loan amount you are asking for. Very important. Step number two, or the hack number two, the rare, those are rare hacks that people don't even think about. I want you to evaluate your current budget, boss. See, the thing is, you, in your budget right now, you probably have, what, income on one side and expenses on the other side. Okay. But what I'm interested in, I want to know more about your disposable income. Talk to me about your disposable income. People talk about, well, I'm making a lot of cash. I'm making a lot of money. I'm making six digits, whatever. You just walk around and just boast in, in the whole neighborhood. But the thing is, you have the zero, zilch staying in your in your, in your pocket afterwards. You know why? Because you're, you have too much, too much loans. You have too much liability. You have you are living beyond your means. You are making you are making six digits, but you are spending six digits or seven digits. So the the bottom line is you are always in the red, or you know. So you want to evaluate your current budget for real. I want you to take right now. I want you to take a piece of paper and put down in one column your income, and you want to think about the potential for increase on your income. In other words, are you having a bonus coming up real quick, real, real soon? Are you going to be promoted? Are you going, are you looking for a new job? So I want you to do what we call prospective analysis. So you are looking at, you're looking at your income and you're thinking, what could happen one year from now, six months from now, three months from now. And you do this analysis even way before you apply for the Navy Federal loan. See, if you want to apply for a loan in, in three months, you want to start doing this and this analysis right now. So you can see whether or not there is room for growth when it comes to your income. You do the same thing for your expenses on the in the other column. So one column for your income, another another column for your expenses. So what you want to do here is that you want to look at your income and your expenses and say, listen, do we have a potential for increase or decrease? 
Where can I cut expenses? Where, where can I really cut costs? Okay. And this kind of decision is better if you are in a relationship, if you're married, it's good to sit down together at the dinner table and have a conversation. Don't do this by yourself unless you're single or you, you know, so it's really important because you want everybody to be on the same page. Okay. Now, I want, when I'm talking about evaluating your current budget, I want you to analyze your personal cash flow trends in general, your cash inflows and cash outflows. Boss, talk to me about that. Is your household, is your uh, household income uh, growing up? Is your partner working? Is your spouse working? This is the kind of analysis I want you to think because the bottom line is what? You, you want to you wanna have a number. That number should be your disposable income, your disposable cash, your cash after paying everybody else, paying your credit card debts, paying your your uh, your, your your installment loans and whatnot. Okay, big decision time, big decision time, boss. Another question for you: What is your current budget? Where are you? Where are you at right now? Talk to me about your current budget. Are you in the red, or do you have disposable income? Talk to me about that. Boss, we are still having a conversation about rare Navy Federal loan hacks on how to always get the loan amount you want, no matter your credit or job status. Okay. Number number three, you want to choose an amount you can repay. See, the whole thing is the whole thing is if you remember what I just said about the twenty five percent rule, if you if you can stick to that, you will realize that you you can you are always you are always able to choose an amount you can repay. See, the, the thing is people look for loans and they're like, listen, I just need 25 grand. I, you know, I really need to solve the problem. So they are thinking about the problem they want to solve. So they are looking at, they're thinking about the loan amount they need. They're not thinking about the, the, the repayment process, the repayment plan. What I'm trying to say here is boss, if you want $50,000 in you, you want to get a loan from Navy Fed and you want guaranteed approval, make sure that you have you're in your budget you have monetary bandwidth you have room to actually include another loan and i feel like you know i'm just out of here you know i can't really you know my ass can take this because it's just too much no you don't want to take another loan and be stressed about the repayment process because if navy fed or another another lender for that matter realizes that you cannot take another loan they're not going to approve you anyway you see, what I'm trying to say here is what? I'm trying to make sure that you have a clear idea about the loan that you want. You have a clear idea about the amount that you want. I want you to work out the numbers, boss. Sit down right now. I want you, I want you, I want, I really, I really want you to sit down and work out the numbers in Excel on a piece of paper. You know, we have the envelope budget, uh, budget people, they love their envelope. That's really, I love it too, by the way. So you want to think about, if you want to calculate the amount you can repay, you can use an online loan calculator. There are a lot of uh, technolo technological tool out there, tools out there that can actually help you out. And you want to plug the chosen number in your budget. So how do things look like after you put you 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 plugged in the additional repayment for the loan that you are about to get? Do things look good or ugly? It's really important because see. What I'm trying to tell you here is you have to do a prospective analysis so you are clear already. You can anticipate the effect of the new loan on your budget even before you start contacting Navy Federal for a loan. See, when you do this analysis beforehand, you will never be surprised, boss. You will always be approved because you have done the you have done the legwork already. The legwork that the Navy Fed is supposed to do. You are you, you have done the work already, so you are sure when you apply, you are guaranteed to be approved. Very important. Now, boss, step number four, the hacks that I'm going to share with you, this is just crazy. It works fantastic. The thing here is that you want to see if you can still reduce the initial loan amount that you came up with. You know why? Let's say let's say you have done your homework, you've done your research, and uh, I just took, uh, you remember, that I took a hypothetical example, right? We were like, you know, you could borrow nine, $9,000 based on a four grand a month. So that's $48,000 a year gross income. Okay, and, and I said, if you apply the 25% rule of net income, not gross income, net income, 25% of net income, you are finding yourself like you can, you can afford a 9,000 loan. Now, you get that, that amount, you go back and, you, and you're trying to reduce it. In other words, you can reduce it by 10%. So you can say, you know what? I think my initial calculations is telling me I can really, uh, I can really qualify for nine grand. Okay, but I'm going to take, take 10% off of it. So from nine grand, I'm going to eighty one hundred. That's ten percent off, or twenty, uh, or fifteen percent, or twenty percent. So from nine grand, I'm going to if I take 
if I take uh, 20 percent of nine grand, that's 1800. So you're, you're looking at 7200. So from nine grand, I think I'm going to apply for a loan around 7200. Boss, when you do this, you are actually given a lot more room. You are given a, a breath of fresh air to your budget. Okay, redo the math you did earlier, the math that we talked about in the with the online loan calculator. Redo the whole thing. When you do this, so what the thing here is that you are you are making it easier for yourself to be approved because you're not you're not aggressive in the loan amount that you need. You are you are conservative. See the whole thing is and going back to what I said earlier, people constantly they apply for loans based on the need, not based on what they can afford. There's a big difference here. Understand me well. Understand me well. I'm not sitting here telling you not to get the loan that you need based on the problem that you want to solve. What I'm trying to say here is that I'm telling you to make sure you are able to repay the loan that you apply for so that you don't have problems. You don't get your you, you don't get your FICO score down, down to the basement. You're not sitting here and, and being stressed about the loan that you just get. You are in control, boss. I want you to be in control. That's what I want for you. Okay, so you, 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 you are clear about the amount that you need. You are clear about the repayment process because you know that you can actually eat that amount. You can say, you know what? I think $700 a month as repayment. I, I can eat that. Yeah, mm, I can really eat that. You know, I'm comfortable because my budget has enough room. That's the kind of strategy, the kind of analysis I want you to do. Next step here, we are, we want to go back to the fundamentals, and I know sometimes when we say this, people are like yeah, you know, y'all saying the same thing again. I'm tired of y'all asking this. And this. <laughs> boss, 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 you gotta check your DTI and CUR, and I'm calling this the fundamentals when it comes to your to your financial situation because DTI and CUR are quintessential if you want to analyze somebody's uh, financial health. And the thing is, when we talk about net worth, because see, here we are speaking about credit. But when you when you want to analyze your net worth, DDI and CUR play an important role. That's why I constantly repeat this. People talk about, well, you saying the same thing. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You are damn right. I I repeat the same thing because it is quintessential, and I want you to make sure that you integrate it into your strategy in your analysis. Okay, what is your current DTI, boss? I mean, if you want Navy Fed to actually uh, to actually uh, guarantee approval or whatever, I mean, you gotta have a, you gotta maintain a low t a low CUR and a low DTI. Where you at? Talk to me about your DTI. Where are you right now? Fifty percent, seventy percent. Where are you in terms of CUR? So the the whole thing here is that people don't understand. The DTI and CUR are not the same thing, but there is a strong correlation between those two. They're they're related. Why? Because CUR is credit utilization ratio, really touches on your revolving lines of credit, credit cards, lines of credit, and whatnot. DTI pays attention to what? Your loans, your debts overall. Now, lines of credit and loans are obligations, and they all are in the in the in the debt section of your balance sheet. So that's the strong correlation I'm talking about. Okay. Now, if you want to dig the analysis, we can even go further and talk about current ratio and uh, quick ratio and all that kind of stuff. But we're not here. We're not here talking about accounting or personal financial accounting. But what I'm trying to say here is what I'm trying to make, tell you. You want to make sure to see what is the possibility of reducing those metrics, those two metrics. If you have high a high DTI or a high CUR, you really gotta sit down and say, listen. Am I living beyond your beyond my means or what? You know what's what are we talking about here? What's really happening here? Hello, you say hello to yourself. Wake up. We have to really really bring those numbers down. Credit card, credit card, credit card, boss. What is your credit card situation? Talk to me about that. Are you are you in control or are you are just uh, scraping by? You have a high CUR. What do you have right now? Do you have a 0%, 20%, 30%? Talk to me about that. Now, another hack that uh, I want to say here is that people talk about you want to apply for a loan and, and uh, you know, I'm going to apply online. Now, I'm here to give you unconventional wisdom, unconventional an unconventional hack. And we've said this before. We'll say it again. When we, when we talk about having a guaranteed approval loan for your Navy Fed, it's better to bring your ass to the nearest branch. 
I don't care. You know, listen, I don't want to hear excuses. I know, you know, people talk about, yeah, I'm busy. The kids have to go to school. You know, I have a nine to five. My boss, blah, 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 blah. My question to you is, you want to get a 45 grand loan, but you, but you, you have no time. You have no time to carve out one hour of your time to go to the nearest branch and sit down with the, with the branch manager or assistant manager. What's up with that? Is your time that valuable? I mean, your time is valuable, but is your time worth 45 grand? Come on. You know, the rest is just procrastination. And you know, listen, I want to bring I want you to bring your procrastinating ass to the nearest branch and get your loan. You want to start the conversation that will lead to you getting the loan. You know why? You might be, you might be like, you know, what is this guy talking about? You know, blah blah blah. And <laughs> listen. I said this before, I really don't care when we have this kind of conversation. People can hate my ass, whatever. I really don't care because I want y'all to actually get approved. That's what I care about. I want you to be approved. Okay? So when you go to the branch, make sure that you bring proof of employment. Don't you go there just like, hey, listen, my name is blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You want to go there, dress up. You want to be presentable and bring proof of employment. Make sure that your income is updated in Navy Fed records. Okay. You want to mention the banking relationship you have with Navy Fed, how long you have been with them. You know, you just want to flatter them. You know, people call it ass kissing. I call it, I call it positive flattering. I, I, I call it strategic flattering. That's the, that, that's the right phrase. Strategic flattering. Okay, when you are at the branch, make sure that you ask for pre-approval. Okay, don't you apply right away. You want to see if you can if you can be pre-approved so that you can save yourself another hard pull. Okay, and you want to gauge as you're talking to the to the Navy Fed rep that you talk to that 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 you meet. Make sure that you ask him or her about your approval odds. They'll tell you based on your records, based on your metrics, based on your membership status, whether or not a loan right now is possible for you. And before I close to this conversation here, I want to give you a few pro tips, okay? I mean, when we talk about Navy Fed or another financial institution for that matter, you have to re- you have to remember that there are two essential elements that always count, that will always count. Your job status and your credit score. Those still matter though. You might be thinking here that hey, listen, if I have I say no matter no matter your credit score or job status, that's true. However, you got You have to be in a position where you can repay the loan, right? So if you don't have no job, if you have no job, at least you, you need to have income. I mean, you don't have. I mean, people have passive income, right? So I mean, it's totally possible to actually uh, be in a position where you can be uh, in a comfortable monetary situation where you can repay the loan and not really worry about uh, you know having a job. But those things still matter. So when you go to the branch, when you actually engage in this sort of process whereby you want to get a loan, you want to get a loan at a, at a point in time, make sure that you always think about your job status. How are you going to answer the question? Do you have a job? And how are you going to answer the, how are you going to answer the question? Why is your credit score so low? What I'm trying to say here is you want to check your FICO score, okay? If your FICO score is low, that's fine. You want to be able to contextualize the FICO score when you talk to the to the assistant manager or to the manager for that matter. What is that? It means that you want to explain why your FICO score was low in the first place. See, they can see a lot in your FICO report, in your credit report, but they don't see anything. They don't see everything, rather. And sometimes it, it, it helps if you, the uh, the uh, the person, I mean, the, the social security number holder you are able to explain what really happened okay one thing for sure whether when we when we are speaking about job status credit score make sure and that's the bottom line make sure that your income status can afford the new loan this is what i care about this is what navy fed cares about again we are speaking here we 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 we, we know how the system works it's important that your income status i, I want to mention i want to emphasize that here your income status, not your job status, is always important because it's all about cash inflows versus cash outflows. That's the bottom line. You know, people can can sit there talk about a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, do this, do that. But look, if you don't have the right the right liquidity, the right cash inflows, how are you going to repay the loan? Talk to me about that. Answer that question, boss. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just sharing with you a few Navy Federal rare loan hacks that get you approved no matter your credit score or job status. 
Okay, so I spoke about applying the 25% rule, evaluating your current budget, choosing an amount you can repay, see if you, if you can still reduce that initial amount, check your DTI and CUR, and go to a branch. Thank you so much. God bless you. I will speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.